Hey, how you doing? I'm Van. Welcome back to the most ADHD channel on YouTube. That's Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder, for short. And let me tell you, it's Stein time, baby. Woo! I love Goosebumps, dude. Like, I found them in my local middle school library and just fell in love with them. There's a lot to like. R.L. Stein, this guy, oh, well, this guy really knew how to make a scary looking thing appeal to children. Then once you combine that with the simplicity of the books, the ease of which you can understand and digest the material within, and the sheer number of books out there, that's all you needed for kids. Really, he didn't even need them to be good. Kids just like, like, the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, so he could have just phoned it in. And he did. He did for a few of them. Don't get me wrong, there's a ton of these bad boys. For the large majority, though, he did a pretty good job. But backing up to when I first discovered the Goosebumps books, I mentioned the thing that drew me to them. Each of the covers had its own artwork that represented what was going to be happening in the book. Typically, it showed whatever the villain or the monster was for that book, or in the case of like Chicken Chicken or My Hairiest Adventure, it just shows what happens to the main character instead. A lot of these covers are really, really good. A lot of them are strangely unnerving. They put you off. They're just, you know, and then some of them, they just got an intern to do. <laughs> I decided I'm just going to rank them. I'm going to rank four of the best and four of the worst covers just because I can. I don't really have like criteria for this. This is literally just me looking through the covers and going, that one's bad, that one's good, that one's mediocre, that one's bad, that one's bad, that one's bad, that one's good. And then I have this list now. We're only covering the original Goosebumps books, the original 62, because I don't know many after that. I know a few. I know like the Choose Your Own Adventure books because I had the Carnival one and the one with the monkey on the cover. But for the sake of simplicity, we're going to keep it as just the classic Goosebumps covers. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. That's going to be the whole video. So, uh, subscribe. So I need to clarify something very quickly before we start talking. I need to go ahead and clarify something before we start talking about the Werewolf of Fever Swamp's cover. Because the cover itself is not bad. Colors are good, the artwork is solid, you even have like this little pile of clothes next to the wolf to show that the wolf was transformed from a person. But I have two problems with it. I have two problems with this cover that make it the fourth worst cover in all of Goosebumps. This is the werewolf of Fever Swamp, not the regular wolf of Fever Swamp. That, that's, a, that's a regular wolf, that is not a werewolf. I want Weregururumon on the cover, that's what I want, and you're giving me Sparky. Secondly, uh, it just kind of looks like they took a t-shirt and threw a spooky cover filter over it. You know, like one of those wolf t-shirts that's just got like a, like a wolf howling at the moon. It just looks like that. You go to a card shop, I guarantee you there's at least one guy with this shirt on right now. Yeah, Night of the Living Nummy is this low. I, I know, that's shocking. A lot of people are going to disagree with this one. This is always one of, if not the top rank cover from anybody that I've ever asked. When you think back to discovering the Goosebumps books on the shelves, and you pulled Night of the Living Dummy from the shelf, and saw Slappy's stupid fucking face, it, 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 it was... It unlocked a fear in me. I didn't know I was afraid of ventriloquist dummies before I saw this cover and before I read this book. I, I know now, I knew after finishing it, I knew about halfway through that I didn't like it. Slappy's not even the villain of the first book, which makes it even better because the covers are phenomenal misdirection. Slappy eventually becomes the problem, but right now he's not. There's just something about Slappy's design. It's literally just a ventriloquist dummy. Slappy is nothing special when it comes to ventriloquist dummies. He just looks like every other one of them. Maybe it's just the cold dead eyes that want me to be unalive right now. I didn't change it uh, for that because I, I, di I didn't want I didn't want him looking at me the whole time. <laughs> Stein, is it cool if I call you RL? RL. Um, what the fuck is this? <laughs> this isn't scary. I don't know what this is. This is just a lady standing on the, like, a treasure chest? What part of this is supposed to entice me to want to read this book? Do I want to look at this treasure chest and go, ooh, wow, I wonder what's in there. I hope the protagonist gets something cool. Or am I supposed to look at her and go, ooh, wow, she looks angry and not at all like a toddler who's pooping their diaper right now. Also, the name of this book is Legend of the Lost Legend, and that's like the Moon Moon of Goosebumps book titles. Do people know Moon Moon anymore? Like, I feel like you have to right? But also, too, I know a lot of old people that say the same thing about a lot of other things, and I'm slowly becoming one of them. So, uh, sound off in the comments if you don't know what Moon Moon is. Oh, you have not said often. You are somewhat reckless. Shocker on Shock Street is arguably one of my favorite Goosebumps books 
period. The book itself was one of the biggest twists for childhood me that actually landed. Most of the time, whenever a twist occurs, you go, okay, well, that's not likely, that's not feasible, that's not something that could happen there, especially in children's material, because most writers don't think children are smart enough to gather the fact that the plot is fucking stupid. Writers, for the most part, tend to treat children as dumb or slow. Most adults do. But kids are smarter than most adults give them credit for, and that was one of the things I appreciated about the ending to this book, because it really blew me away. As an adult, it's middling. You know, I mean, it is what it is. It's a children's book, so it's not gonna really be like thick in substance. But what drew me to this book, just like the other Goosebumps books, is the cover. I love this cover. I know it's a big, angry praying mantis, and that's pretty much it. That's the entire cover. The sky gradient, I think, is what does it for me. The orange-red sky contrasting with the blue of the praying mantis, while also framing it dead center of the book cover, made Kid Me look at it and go, oh, wow. I'm into this. I do understand that, objectively, it's probably nothing special. There's not a whole lot going on on this cover right here. Even as a kid, I preferred minimalism. I like clean lines, I like obvious focus, and I also liked bugs. So this was just right up my alley. Right up my street, I guess. This cover pisses me off. I did a little research for this video before I sat down and started talking in front of the microphone. And this cover, and this cover's never at the bottom of anybody else's rankings. I don't know how. It's just a fish. Like, it's not even like a particularly scary fish. It just, it just looks like a fish. In its defense, it is framed very similarly to Shocker on Shock Street. There is one thing contrasting with the color gradient of the background. That one thing is dead center, and then there's another couple of little details kind of scattered around. It's not scary. It's not threatening. It's not intimidating. We don't have anything for size. We don't have anything for scale. We don't have anything at all. It's just a fish! Cut him off! <laughs> Cut him off! Oh. Where's the reptilian headquarters? You know... A lot of people don't like this one. This is one of my favorites. It always has been. They look fun, you know? They look like cool dudes. Like, I'd want to hang out with the Velociraptor crew after school, but only if they'd let me smoke cigarettes and bake cookies with them after class. It's also only now that I'm just realizing, like, this this, this, is, like, this is like a reptilian thing, isn't it? Like an actual conspiracy theory. Reptilians are secretly everybody you know, and they're all around you, and they're secretly controlling everything. I know that this cover isn't scary. I get that. I know that that's what a lot of people look for in Goosebumps covers, or in horror movie covers, in general. But at some point, they all start to blur together if they're all trying to be just scary. The early Goosebumps books are so iconic and so easy to remember, but generally, there's an effort to make it scary, at least in the lighting or the tone of the photo in question. The creeps are just hanging out, and I kind of love that. I just want to be their friends. I want, I want to call all creeps. <laughs> couple of honorable mentions before we talk about number one and number one, but better, Attack of the Mutant and Camp Jelly Jam. I know that that's not the actual title, but it's Camp Jelly Jam. It's like the horror at Camp Jelly Jam or something. Attack of the Mutant was going to go on the worst list, but I'm so nostalgic for this book and for this cover that even though it's not scary and his hideout kind of looks just like a giant fire hydrant that's been recolored for some reason, this was one of my favorite books, though. The way that the story, again, was not a traditional Goosebumps story really attracted me to it, and it was very, very different. So while the cover's not very good, I have such a nostalgia for it that I cannot just let it slide. I can't put it on that bad side. If we weren't using the original covers, though, what is this? Who had this? Who did this to you? Camp Jelly Jam was gonna go on the best list, but it makes me uncomfortable. I don't like looking at him. And I know Slappy's on here, but honest to God, this counselor makes me more uncomfortable than Slappy. So he doesn't get to be on the list. <laughs> There are two types of Goosebumps books. There are Goosebumps books that follow an overarching story or an overarching villain, one that may appear in multiple different books, such as Slappy or Monster Blood. Or you have your standalones, and that's the majority of them. Monster Blood 1 was published really, really early in Goosebumps, and don't worry, this isn't the cover I'm talking about. Monster Blood 1's cover, though simple, is good. I like it. Thing is, though, they get progressively worse the further up the Monster Blood series you get. Monster Blood 2 is just like a big, fat, ugly hamster, but at least he's a little monstrous, you know? Monster Blood 3 is like a giant, just his feet. I think the implication is that our main character, who is a child, has become a giant. It's just such a boring cover. But I prefer boring to whatever the fuck 
Monster Blood 4 has going on. The point of the covers is to make you uncomfortable and to make you go, ooh, that's weird or gross or both. But this just makes me sad. I, I don't know what these things are, but I don't like them. They look miserable. They look like they want me to be miserable. Like, they look like they're judging me, you know? I don't want to be judged for reading Goosebumps. If I wanted to be judged for reading Goosebumps, I'd read it in church or something. Random tangent. I grew up in the Bible Belt. A lot of parents didn't let their kids do certain things or engage in certain things. I wasn't allowed to watch Harry Potter, for instance, because witches and wizards. Has anyone's parents ever stopped them from reading Goosebumps? I mean, it's reading, so I feel like most parents would be okay with it, but there's always the extreme cases. Let me know in the comments, please. I'm curious. But yeah, I just don't like them. They're, they're unremarkable, they're kind of dumb, and it's so far removed from the original Monster Blood concept that I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's happening, really. There's not even any green in it anymore, and that was the color of the monster blood. It's like neon electric blue now. Maybe they're horseshoe crabs. Maybe it's horseshoe crab blood. You may think less of me for this, but I never read this one. As a kid, this cover terrified me. RL, do you do your own art? I feel like you don't, but you might. You might surprise me. Why would you traumatize a child with this? This isn't fun. This isn't cute. This isn't child friendly. This is scary. It was to me at least. I don't know if that translates to everybody else, but I feel like that this is a probably a, a good one for us to all kind of come together on and agree is scary as hell. The bloodshot eyes, the way that the head is just barely above the water, the completely pale white, like bone white skin. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be here. I don't want to go to Camp Cold Lake. I, I don't even like cold lakes. I don't like camp and I definitely don't like being drowned by an angry ghost. I know people are going to disagree at least a little bit, and that's okay. There's a huge variety to these covers, and there's a huge variety to Goosebumps in general. I don't know how many Goosebumps there are currently, but I'll look into it and put a number in the video around this time. Wow, what a big number that is, right? To be perfectly honest, this was just kind of an excuse to see how I could do without writing a script. My script for this entire video was literally just the covers of the books, like the names of them. I hate a script. I hate following my lines. I want to change it every time I read it. It's just ADHD. I've got a lot of irons in the fire right now as far as videos and video concepts and video ideas, right? That like, yeah. And I don't know what order they'll come out. I don't know what order I'll make them. I don't know any of that. I'm just running and gunning right now, man. But yeah, y'all have a great rest of your night. <laughs>